Well, what comes to mind when I hear Ed's name is basically the guy who reinvented guitar play. I mean, you know, no one played guitar like Ed did. I first grew up in Los Angeles. I was born and raised here, not far from where we're sitting right now. And I grew up like any other kid and then discovered music probably when I was 12 years old, discovered music. And uh, when I was younger, I was friends with this kid, Kenny Kubernick, and we used to take the bus from our parents' house and we get off at Hollywood and La Brea and we go in and out of all the stores, but the highlight was going to this one shop called Lewin's Record Paradise, which was on Wilcox in Hollywood. And they used to sell imported records there. So they had imported Beatles records and we could barely afford the $3, you know, domestic things, but we could afford the eight by tens and the five by sevens that they used to sell there. You know, we'd be like little kids in the candy shop. Oh, look at this one of Keith. Look at this one of Mick. Oh, look at Brian Jones here. And we'd buy a dollar fifty, two dollars worth of photos, take them home and hang them on our walls like any sort of star-studded fan would do back when they were a young kid. The first time I heard Van Halen, I was in an office, and uh, what do you call All of a sudden, I think Running With The Devil came on, and I'm like, you know, heard the, yeah, bomb, bomb. I'm like, and then I heard, you know, the guitar chords, and I was like, oh my God, this is cool. And then as soon as Dave came in and started singing, I was like, this is fantastic. I love this. And then it went right into eruption and you really got me and I was sold. Okay. And to me, being a photographer, you got to pick up on the bands that you think are going to be huge later on. I heard them when I heard them and said, I need to work with this band now. First time I heard Ed play, I was like, wow, no one plays guitar like this guy. This is unique. It's different. You know, he created his own style. No one else played like that, period. Now, those photos there are from the two shows I did, the first two shows I ever really shot Van Halen a lot. So the last two shows on the end of the 78 tour was San Diego's Sports Arena, and then they played the Long Beach Arena. And they didn't have the whole arena because Van Halen wasn't that big. You know, you could cordon off the arena, whether it's 16th hour, 1600. Well, that image you're holding up there, that was shot in Oakland in 78. And it was a day on the green, Bill Graham. And I mean, you can't see how big it is. There were probably 50,000 people there that day. And they just, I mean, back in the early days, Van Halen just annihilated all the other bands. But when Van Halen hit the stage and they were on 10, they were on 10,000, okay? You know, no one could touch them. You know, I mean, Dave was one of the best showmen that ever lived up till, you know, working with Dave and meeting him. To me, Mick Jagger was the greatest front man in the music industry. You know, in that shot, I'm on stage left by Ed and he just danced over and looked to me like, this is wonderful. That's another shot from the same show. I mean, just look at the energy. You can see those stands are just jam packed with people, you know, like sardines in a sardine can. It was you know, and Dave's doing his little dance there. And Ed's down on his knees. Alex is on the drum riser. Is just you know that was that was an amazing day. Okay, so that sequence there is what I call the long lost Ed photos. Okay, so here it is. I shot those in seventy eight. I shot that session for Van Halen too. Well, forty forty five years later at my studio, I have lots of shots of Michael. Lots of shots of Dave and hardly any shots of Ed, maybe four or five shots. And I was always like, what happened to the Ed shots? So my friend Michael Strider calls me up and he's like, hey, Zlows, are these your photos? And I'm like, what? And he sends me a link. So Noel Monk, the manager, was selling all his Van Halen paraphernalia and he was having an auction. So I go look at the link he sends. I'm like, oh my God, Noel's got like 50 photos of Ed and it was, I could tell it was the film, actually. And I'm like, wait a second. I always thought Warner Brothers had those photos and I could never get them back. Or I didn't know who had them, honestly, but I knew I didn't have them. So I call him Noel. 
I'm like, Monk, you know, you're selling this shit. You know, I, I need it back. It's mine. Okay, Neil, no big deal. For 40 years, I had five shots from that shoot. Those are the first time in probably 50 years that eight-tenths of those photos that Ed from that shoot have ever been seen. Yeah, those photos there are from the world-famous Sunset Sound, or I think they recorded most of their records, if I'm not mistaken. But they call me up. They wanted me to do a shoot there. I got into the studio. The place was a pigsty. Schlitz malt liquor bottles everywhere. McDonald's food wrappers everywhere. You know, we did individuals and we did group shots. And, you know, of course, Ed, you know, he had the famous bomb there, which was, I guess, an old uh, bomb that an airplane, you know, would drop. And he used to have all his electronics hidden in there, which everybody thought was the coolest thing in the world. And I think you could see his pedal board down there and, you know, so on and so forth. You could see in the photos there that Dave's got the no shoe. I think he's got a white capizio on one foot and, and the other foot is all bandaged up still from when he was jumping off doing Van Halen 2 photo shoot. Well, in 78, I mean, the only other, I mean, there was Randy Rhodes, who was a friend of mine. And, and people said there was a big rivalry between Randy and Ed, but I never heard Ed talk about Randy and I never really heard Randy talk about Ed. Ed was really a shy guy when I first met him. He was quiet, and Eddie was always had a guitar with him, and he makes it look so effortless. No one sounded like him. I don't think people can manipulate their fingers like him. I mean, I don't know how he did it. Yeah, he was just, I mean, he was an innovator. What, what can you say about Ed? I mean, he's one of the greatest guitarists that ever lived. Back in the day, we used to do, you know, Dave lived, at this big mansion that his dad owned out in Pasadena. And we did a lot of the early shoots out there. So that's one of the first shoots I did with the band out there at uh, Dave's house. That's the famous shot of them on the stairs at Dave's house in 1978. And, you know, you could see it was pretty much street clothes, but they still just had that rock god look like we're going to be big stars. And those photos are the ones where... You know, I think Warner Brothers, the art director, when I started shooting them in 78, early 79, the art director's like, look, Neil, we want to soften up their image. You know, they got this tough guy look, which is what I like. The art director even said, Neil, go buy a Frisbee, take him to the park, play Frisbee with him. I'm like, what the fuck are you thinking? So you can see, here's a shot where they're looking all cool and serious and they look pretty good. And then something about Dave, when Dave tried to smile, it just, it didn't work for him. I mean, some of the other guys are okay smiling, but just Dave, Dave looked better with the cheeks, like, mm, you know, he'd do the David Lee Roth pose. And so, you know, that's the comparison. You could see one, the happy go lucky Van Halen there. And then the other one, you could see the tough, brutal, we're going to be rock stars Van Halen, you know. Well, Ed called me up one day. He's like, hey, Zlos, can you know, bring some guitars down? We can do a shoot. And I'm like, yeah, sure, Ed, I'd love to. So he brought all those guitars down. And by then, I guess he's got his 59 Sunburst Les Paul, and uh, which I understand Wolfie has now. But you know, that's what he had at the time. It was just starting to collect and so on. And Ed was in a great mood that day. And it you know, it's funny, when I would do shoots with him individually where none of the other members around you got a whole different personality because, you know, here's Ed shooting with Dave watching or he didn't care about Aller, but, you know, you got people watching and sometimes it's hard to be cool. Like I said, Eddie was a shy little innocent kid back then. That was Ed before the show. I guess he's sitting down and I don't know if he's modifying the set list or if he's going over the set list, but it looks like he's got a pen in his hand and he's I know the songs are on there. I can't remember. You can see the abbreviations for the song. They don't write the whole thing out. I mean, no, it's just Ed backstage doing whatever. You know, you do sound check. You got a lot of time to kill before you get go on. Eddie would usually be backstage tuning it up for an hour before they went up, you know, practicing, getting his fingers in shape. You can see he looks happy, though. He always was... He was always in a good mood when I was shooting him. Well, that's from the Pretty Women video shoot, which was a long day. It was out in Saugus somewhere. Well, that's probably when they were doing Ed's scene for the video. So each guy played a different guy. I think 
and Michael plays a samurai sword, and Ed plays the little uh, cowboy gunslinger, and Dave played Napoleon. Ed had the coolest outfit by far. He looks pretty badass there. 1984, the first time I heard, I mean, that to me was their most, other than Diver Down, but 1984 was their most commercial album to me. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the song Jump, because that's one of, to me, their wimpier songs, but obviously it's also one of their biggest selling records. And I really like Ed playing guitar better than keyboards. You know, Ed's a guitarist. There's the House of Pain and Hot for Teacher, and there's some great songs on 1984, and that obviously was their biggest selling record to date out of all the albums that they did up to that point. When they were originally shooting the Jump video, they decided to do all these different scenes all over town. Like, for instance, that was a private jet, and we went to the airport, and it's supposed to give you the impression they're getting ready to go on tour with their 10 million Hall gold Halliburton suitcases. And I don't remember what happened that day, but let's just say Dave was not in a good mood, and you can look at him in the big picture and look at the expression on his face, and you can see, I can tell, maybe the people looking at it, he was a very happy camper that day. And then those photos are of Ed, and I think, I still can't remember if we did it either at Marvin Hamlish's house or Bert Bacharach's house out of Malibu, but they dressed Ed up in a white tuxedo and had him at the house, and, you know, the other one's him on the beach at sunset, probably, you know, we probably changed clothes and walked him right outside the beach and shot him there. Well, that was a three-day shoot. I, I guess we did it at the, I don't know if it's called Marshall High School. Yeah, John Marshall High School, and, you know, we had Waldo there, and they had the kids that, they had the little Eddie, you know, clone, and the Michael clone, and Al clone, the Dave clone, and I forgot, you know, it's supposed to be young kids in a schoolroom. I guess it's supposed to be them as kids in the schoolroom. And well, they had a professional dancer come in who had to try to teach them the dance step. I mean, it was probably a lot easier for Dave to pick up those because Dave sort of, you know, him being the showman. And it was funny watching, especially Al, watching Al try to learn those dance. That was, that was funny. Well, so that show was done at Ed's recording studio that he built at his house in Coldwater Canyon. And Ed, being a true musician, wanted to have control. And if he wanted to go in there in three in the morning or three in the afternoon and lay some ideas down before he lost them in his head, he can go there 24 7 and do whatever he wanted to do. He probably slept in there and lived in there more than his house. But I mean, they didn't go to any other studios. Uh, you know, I think they, once that was built, they did whatever they did there. I, I don't think they recorded 1984 album there because I don't think it was done yet uh, to record it there. But I'm sure all the Sammy albums and the Gary Sharon albums after were all done at 5150. So after the 1984 tour, the Van Halen is we, the world knew it broke up with Dave as a singer. They just went their own ways. Next thing you know, Sammy's in the band and Dave's out. And 5150 came out first with Sam. So they wanted to clean house and basically get everybody new. Nothing that had to do with the Dave era. Pete Angelus is gone. Eddie Anderson, security's gone. Sound men are gone. Security's gone. But I was one of the people caught in that turmoil. They didn't want me anymore because they wanted to clean house. Everybody had to do with, you know, the Dave error. So 10 years later, and they're doing a uh, press for a new album that was coming out and a week of doing nothing but interviews and a week of doing nothing but photo shoots. And I was up at Ed's house, you know, for the first time working with them in 10 years. And it was like, I just saw him a week ago. They treated me like nothing ever happened. We were like family again. And went and did a whole bunch of shoots. Ed, obviously you could see he looks like a different guy. I mean, that was sort of in the grunge era. So the long hair is gone and all that. So those are just some shots I did that end up at his 5150 again, 10 years later, you know, for the first time in ages. Well, that was the Gary Sharon era. So I had to go to a place in North Hollywood called the Power Plant where they were rehearsing to do 
I don't know, that, I guess they were getting ready to record the Gary Sharon album or get ready to go on tour. And that was the first shoot I did. I've known Gary since 1989. He's a great singer, great guy, loved the guy. So he was new in the band. And uh, we did a shoot at the power plant with him. I shot Ed with a whole bunch of different guitars. And, you know, he's, he was... He was great that day again. That was, you know, I went up to Shoreline Amphitheater right around San Jose and shot them there. And, you know, this show was the show was good. I just love Gary. But I want to see Gary with Extreme. I don't want to see him with Van Halen. And one of my favorite shots is Ed in the back in the Gary Sharon years at Soundcheck playing the acoustic guitar. I mean, how many times do you see Ed playing an acoustic guitar? I don't think I have any other than that stuff from the outdoor sound check in Shoreline Apathy. When Ed passed away, I remember where I was. I was eating Thai food with some friends of mine, and someone sent me a text message saying, Eddie Van Halen just passed away. No one escapes old age, sickness, and death. Knowing Michael, and I knew Al too, I still keep in touch with Al, but you know, I knew, you know, everybody knew Ed was sick. I mean, anything great is timeless, a great photograph, great music. I mean, he was an innovator. What, what can you say about Ed? I mean, he's one of the greatest guitarists that ever lived. There's not many people that come along that changed the face of guitar playing. Owen played like Ed when I first heard him, and he changed, you know, the way guitar playing was played. Well, this is my new book, Ed Buys Lowe's. And my inspiration for the book was, you know, Ed passed away a couple of years ago and people cannot get enough Eddie Van Halen. I hope they never forget him. I know I'll never forget him. So myself and my art director, Daniel Gray, put this book together with some of my less well-known unseen images of Ed that I shot from 1978 to about 1997. Well, when I think back on Ed, I think about A seeing some of those Van Halen shows I saw. I mean, there's not a lot of live footage of Van Halen from the early days, but, I mean, Ed was a great guy. But, yeah, I miss Ed, you know. It's, you know, he had a great life. He was a great guy. The whole world misses Ed. And, you know, there'll never be another Eddie Van Halen.